up early and up early and returning Kyle's trailer. That was awesome of him to let me use that for the Jeep yesterday. What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, machines and machine freaks. We are at the shop, we got Crush here. We got the new Wrangler and the BMW is sitting right outside there. Now the, as you guys know from yesterday, when I bought this thing, this thing has no brakes, okay? This thing is a beast, it is the six cylinder. It's got a seven inch, seven inch lift, my apologies. Seven inch lift, so this thing is huge. But the fact that it has no brakes, it's a huge liability. Now this thing needs work and the BMW needs work. The Crush doesn't really need that much work. Saying that, I don't wanna dive into this just yet. I think what I'll do is I'll make room for the Jeep, pull that as tight to the wall there, and then bring the BMW inside and check it out. Okay, so I moved this stuff over here. It was originally right there. Now I gotta fire this bad boy up. As you guys can remember, it is extremely, extremely loud. <laughs> Yeah, that thing's loud. Not yesterday, but the day before that, we picked up the BMW, this car. Here, roll the clips. We're at Kyle's, we're gonna pick up his trailer. I don't have the right ball. Do you think he's got it in his truck? Where do you think the ball is? The plan is Kyle, and they're, they're all out of the vehicle right now. Kyle and Ian are gonna go look at a back blade for I think Kyle's new tractor. You guys have not seen that. I've only seen it one time. Um, they're gonna go look at a back blade for that. We have the trailer hooked up. After that, if we buy it or do not buy it, we're gonna go pick up the BMW. The BMW we haven't touched in a long, long time, and it's, it's finally time we're gonna touch it again. So here's Kyle's new addition, new attachment. Still there. Didn't fall off, so that's good. Moment of truth, is it gonna start? Oh, well the key. The key and everything's working. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Like new. Windows still work? Yep. That'll work. What are we caught on? Yeah, I think I might need a push, Ian. It didn't sound good, but it did it. What were we caught on up on here? Just just kind of probably worn brakes. Probably just rusty brakes because there's not really too much there. I might actually be better off backing it on. It's rubbing really bad when we go forward. But when we go back, it doesn't sound too bad. You want me to back it on or pull it on forward? Right like you got it. That was too easy. So I got it back and you can hear that it's got some sort of uh, issue with the rear end. I wanna back it in the warehouse and we can address that issue. Let's check out what's going on down here. I know we got a broken mount. Where the heck is it? Doesn't look like it's that one. Doesn't look like it's that one. All right, so this is what's going on. This differential has three mounts to keep it in place. Now, one of these mounts, well, the, the bolt to the mount broke. There's this mount right here. You can see there's a circle there. There's supposed to be a head of a bolt right there. That prevents the differential of this piece right here from going up and down. And, and since that bolt's gone, so now the drive shaft's going up and rubbing this piece right here and causing that noise right there. Yes, that noise right there. So, the plan is, I'm gonna rock and roll, turn on some jams, get that drill, send that through our hole, and then hopefully extract it with a screw extractor. Hopefully it works. I figure instead of taking this whole differential out and putting it back in, I'll just try to drill it out from down here. 
The BMW is outside. The BMW got me a little dirty. Now we're going to move the Jeep. The Jeep has that running issue. It starts and it stalls. So I think it's best to check out what's inside the gas tank, like the fuel filter, the fuel pump, and things like that. And plus, this one's got to go anyways. So it's a perfect time to get rid of it. Now, I also saw something down here, and I'll let you take a look. There's a few lines coming from up on top of the gas tank here, and this one's just completely... Just there's nothing on the end of it. You see that? Nothing. Now I don't know what you're used to in your area, but in this area, this thing looks phenomenal. If you think this is rusty, you haven't seen rusty. Drop the gas tank. So here's the gas tank. Luckily it's a plastic gas tank. It definitely needs a good shining. But this was the line that I, I showed you was just completely gone. I'll check that out in a minute. I do want to remove the rest of this. That looks a little better. I'm uh, removing the front fender here. We got Danny here. Danny, say hi to the machine freaks. Hello, machine freaks. We're taking off this fender and then we'll probably work over there. I'm following this return fuel line. Here's a little bit of it right there. That was the broken portion off of the uh, fuel pump over there. So I'm just, if I remove this, I can see more on what's going on over here. So it's kind of neat that this is new because it's going to make it a lot easier to remove it. Very thankful about that. I'm gonna take off this piece of aluminum, it looks like. I wanna see if he was hiding anything or if, you know, whoever sold it to me was hiding anything. To make it look pretty, not necessarily to like, you know, say, ah, I pulled a quick one on me. No, just to, I feel like if you bought something like this, you'd wanna hide something. Doesn't look too bad. Put bubble gum on the end of that thing. Now you could say that tire is no, definitely studded. shot. It's studded. <laughs> looks pretty clean. He, yeah. It looked like he wasn't hiding anything except for maybe a little bit of this. But no, that's just paint chipping. Yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. Yeah, that's solid. I'm very, very impressed. The only thing is, is this is a dissimilar metal to this. So when you put aluminum on steel, the, the aluminum oxidizes and starts to peel away the paint. And then your steel rusts. So... Try to shy away from doing that. Well, Danny took off. I think he got sick of my Dodge jokes. Thing is, though, is I can't be saying any jokes. I just bought a Jeep. I just went from the most common size, a half inch, to the second most common size, 10 millimeter. I'm bleeding? Where am I? Oh, yeah, I got my thumb pretty good. Paul in the comment section, you were right. I will definitely need a tetanus shot. And just like that, the second fender is off, and the Jeep now looks like that. I have a lot of questions and I figure I'm putting this video up tonight so I'll just you know ask you guys questions because I've already got a couple people sending me uh, manuals for these things which is greatly appreciated thank you very much I will shout you out I just don't have your names on me right now but anyways here are a couple of my questions where do some of these things plug into now this sits on that fender right there now I can't help but notice but that is a big big plug and I just don't see where that would go. I mean, this engine's pretty bare, along with uh, this wire right there. That plug, and then plugs like that, they come off the headlight. So you can probably tell as well what parts are missing. If you want to leave that in the comment section below, I'd really appreciate it. We can get this thing going, get this thing rocking and rolling. This thing is awesome. I am very, very impressed with the shape as I'm tearing this thing apart. Like that fuel protector, that thing was shot, but underneath there, look at that. That looks really, really nice. I like the fact that you can take off things like this, like the battery holder. You could take that right off and have that sandblasted and painted or powder coated. In my case, I'm just gonna powder coat a lot of this stuff. Jason's actually gonna come to the 3D Machines warehouse tomorrow. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do because I actually bought an upgrade that there's no point in us really messing with the engine right now. Man, I'm so dirty the camera doesn't even wanna focus on me. Yeah, I know that might sound crazy. Not, not me being the dirty thing that I almost just gave it away. No, but I know that might sound crazy because the engine doesn't run exactly like the best. 
but it does start and it does run. I personally think it's just sensors. I think the computer doesn't know how much fuel is going into it, how much gas is being burnt, what kind of fuel to put into the thing. So it says, whoa, 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 wait a second, and it just shuts down. This is gonna do it for this 3D Machines production. I hope you guys enjoyed the BMW, the Jeep, and the little glimpse of Crush. Stay froggy fresh, stay super fly, be in that comment section so I can know what's going on in your heads and give me some ideas to put in mind. Until tomorrow, does this horn work? Nope, 3D machine's out.